ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿ ಮೀರಾಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ ಮಿಲಿತನ್ ಏನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ very happy to be with all of you to share more stories of shila prabhupad's life shila prabhupad had just initiated his first set of disciples in new york in 1966 september of 1966 and now he also was talking about plans to expand krishna consciousness to other parts of the of america and maybe of the world but the devotees of new york were thinking no swami ji has to be with us how can what will happen to our spiritual life without swami ji with us because their lives centered around swami ji attending his classes his kirtan his prasadam serving him and they were very dependent on him for their spiritual life but swami ji would talk about going to other places and one such place was san francisco there was a reason why shila prabhupad had heard about san francisco and what was happening san francisco was another place where large number of young american boys and girls were coming congregating gathering there looking for an alternate life alternate lifestyle and they were into exploration of unfortunately being not so guided to drugs and sex and spirituality so there were a large number of people in fact towards the end of 1966 there was one gathering in san francisco of about 30000 young people who had come off from all over america and canada and different places so that was the um, that was the place where prabhupad had heard from some of his followers that he should next try an attempt to start a temple so mukunda and janaki one of the first disciples and they had given up their plans to go to india and explore spirituality and all of that to set up a temple for swami ji and they headed towards san francisco and they were closely supported and helped by their friend sam and melani and they called up and told them that can you come over and they were too happy to join and they started looking for a right place to open a temple Mukunda also had help and was very much involved in setting up of the first temple of ISKCON in New York 26 Second Avenue. He was involved in finding the place, negotiating with the agent and all of that. And so he knew exactly what Swami ji was looking for and what a temple should be and all of that. And so now he was looking out for a similar place. for swami in san francisco 
And the place that where large number of young people were gathering was known as Haight-Ashbury District. And they wanted to be as close as possible. And, uh, but then they didn't have money. So uh, what, was, what were they going to do? And there was an, they all gathered, Mukunda, Janaki, Sam, Melanie, and Janaki's sister, John, who was later on going to become uh, Yamuna, and uh, maybe a few other acquaintances. And they were thinking, actually, you know, we have to get Swami as quickly as possible to come to San Francisco. But before he comes, we must have a temple. And uh, to have a temple, we need money. And so Janaki said, you know, how will we get money? We are not some kind of professionals or something. Somebody is going to give us a job and we can do something. We can make money like that. Then Sam said, you know, I know one thing that I can sell in good quantity and make a lot of money here. But you know what he was referring to. But Swamiji may not be happy to hear about that. And immediately Janaki said, of course, Swamiji does not approve of selling of drugs and such things. And so what else can we do? Then uh, uh, Melanie suggested, uh, you know, I can sell essential oils. Meaning, you know, those fragrant oils extract from a flower and all of those kind of things. These young, uh, these kind of young people, counterculture people would be looking for these kind of things. And so there will be probably, a, I can make bottles of essential oils. But then how many you're going to make? How much you're going to, how much money you're going to make from all of those things? We can't set up a temple for Swami with that little small trickle of money. Then uh, they were thinking, also we should help Swami spread his message. That's an important thing as well. So then they came up with the idea, maybe we should have a concert, some kind of a rock concert, because all these young Americans were into music, and that was part of the thing. So maybe we should have a rock concert, and maybe we should introduce the Hare Krishna mantra chanting, and maybe we should have a large number of people gathering, and even Swami address them, and that should be a ticketed show. They all looked at each other and said, looks like a good idea. And so they started developing that idea, how to, how to get uh, well-known music bands among those people, yeah, among those young people. They should come and perform, and then there will be music, and then we will also have Swamiji come, and it will be a ticketed show, and it should be in a good location so that large number of people can come. So all of these ideas began to emerge. And uh, not in the next few days, they identified that uh, there was one place known as the Avalon Ballroom. It was a place where about 4,000 people can gather big hall meant for these kind of gatherings and concerts and all of that. There was no seating there. It was just an empty bare hall and there was a balcony on one side and bare walls on the other side and there could be some people on the, in the balcony and large number of people and then there was a stage and the music system, the, the public address system would set up, would be set up there and, and that's what it was being used for. and. Uh, they went and uh, booked the hall, the uh, ballroom, and the date was fixed, January 29, 1967. So date was all set. Now, that was the day when Swamiji has to come. And uh, so then they started quickly looking around while they are making arrangements for the uh, for the music concert. Then they thought about what's the name for this music concert? Can we call it trans dance or something like that? And they thought of different names. And finally they came up with the name Mantra Rock Dance. 
And they felt that, yeah, this is something good. All the young people will like this. This is mantra is there because Swamiji wants to popularize the mantra. And this is all about rock and there is dance. And this is really good for the young counterculture people. So that they've decided on that, that we're making a poster and all of those kind of enlisting who will come and some of the big names those days among these young people. They got those wrong band, rock bands to come and perform. And Mukunda was looking around for a place and then they identified one storefront which was very similar to what they had set up in New York. And this was on a street called Frederick Street. And so they identified a storefront 518 Frederick Street. And just behind that, ne next to that, there was another building. And then on the third floor, there was an apartment. Fast Swamiji, exactly working out like New York storefront temple and an apartment behind for Swamiji. So all of this was set up. And then uh, Mukunda decides to call Swami on the phone and tell him. And, uh, you know, they went to, they go to a public phone and they're making a long distance call. And then you have to have enough quarters those days. And uh, it's not like now you have a mobile phone and you can make a phone call and hardly cost anything. And those days it was not so. And you had to have quarters, quarter dollars, and you have to keep putting them. And then you get, you can speak for three minutes. And then if you want to speak longer, you have to drop a few more. And all those kind of, that was the kind of situation those days. So uh, Mukunda calls Swami and then Swami comes on the line. And then uh, Mukunda begins to tell Swami that how they have found a place. It's just like the 26 Second Avenue. There's a storefront and there's a lot of young people showing interest in that. And Swami is very happy to hear all of those things. And so, and then he tells about the mantra rock dance that has been planned on Jan 29. So uh, Swami asks, so you want me to come on 29th or some... No, no, we want no, we want you to come much earlier, Swami. Swamiji, we want you to come by January 17th. And then uh, Swamiji asks, How do I come? And then uh, Mukunda is thinking for a few seconds. And then Swamiji, you must fly from New York to San Francisco. And then uh, you see, actually, Srila Prabhupada is so innocent. I mean, very innocent conversation. You can see that innocence. Uh, and then uh, Swamiji Prabhupada asks, so will you send the ticket? And uh, Mukunda is now thinking, my God, we had not ta thought about that one. He closes his mouthpiece of the telephone and then looks at Sam and then says, what to do? And then they exchange in a few seconds. And then he comes back onto the phone and, Yes, Swamiji, I'll send you the ticket. Because Prabhupada didn't have money. And uh, 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 he had never flown, in fact. And uh, so uh, this was the, I think it's a, it's a very significant thing that we should see the situation Srila Prabhupada was in. He was very eager to spread Krishna consciousness and then he is hearing that there's a great opportunity in San Francisco and he wants to get there but no money and here there are a few of his students who have gone and made all these arrangements but how will he go? So that was a big thing and, and then Mukunda agrees to send her. So how will you, how will you and, and Prabhupada is so innocent, not very familiar, how will I get the ticket? Will you send it by post? And then uh, Mukunda says, no, no, I will, I will make the arrangement. You have to go to the airport and then show up and tell, tell your name. And then they will give that. Oh, really? You will die? <laughs> Prabhupada is not familiar with these things. So uh, uh, some kind of a very, very innocence you can see. And there is some kind of a purity you can see in Srila Prabhupada's heart. And so it's all set that Prabhupada is going to fly on January 17th. And uh, the devotees in New York are quite unhappy. And in fact, they start thinking that what is this? The devotees in San Francisco, they are trying to create some kind of a mantra rock and all these things. 
what will happen? You know, and all those uh, kind of hippies and then Swamiji is going to go in that kind of a place and they're into drugs and all these kind of things. And Swamiji should not go there. But then, uh, you know, and then there is this tension and then they're talking to Swamiji. Swamiji, it's not the right place for you to go. It's not like New York. It's not like storefront. It's not like the Tompkins Square Park. It's very different out there. And then Swamiji is hearing and all these kind of things. And of course, Prabhupada is thinking, let's see what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arranges, how his Sankirtan movement should be spread. And as his uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu servant, he is ready to explore and, and see all of these kind of opportunities that unfold. And out there, the devotees, these few young Americans, only two of them are initiated. All others are just not even initiated. They have not seen Swamiji. Sam and Melanie have not seen Swamiji. They have just heard about him. And they have seen that uh, newspaper clipping from New York Times and, and heard so much from Mukunda and Janaki about him. <clears throat> and... Uh, so they are making arrangements, they are distributing flyers that uh, Swamiji is coming, he's come from India and he wants to bring Krishna consciousness to the West and he's arriving on January 17th and uh, people can come and receive him at the airport. And he was arriving at, uh, <clears throat> uh, he was arriving at 2.30 p.m. arrival by United Airlines. And uh, so they gather together and about 50 people, they make a flyer and in the flyer they distribute and they, they distribute in different places and put up posters that Swamiji is coming. And they say, you can bring your musical instruments. You can bring flowers. You can bring incense. You know, something they thought that that's the appropriate thing to receive Swamiji. And about... Uh, 50 people gather there and they all head towards the airport and uh, some of them, Sam also had a dog and the dog also came along and there was another devotee, another young, can't say devotee, becoming aspiring devotee, he had another car, two dogs also went along with this group of 50 people, enthusiastic people and then they were all, and then uh, when they were waiting there, with flowers, holding flower in their hand and a burning incense and it was billowing smoke all around and creating, a, it was quite a sight for the people in the airport that had never seen this kind of a gathering. People with long hair and colorful clothing and all those kind of things and two dogs running around here and there and eagerly anticipating Swamiji's arrival. And there was another important person that, uh, who helped Srila Prabhupada, and that was Allen Ginsberg. He was a poet, and he used to write his poems about the counterculture philosophy and the thinking of the young people. And so he was very popular among the uh, counterculture people. He was a little elderly, and he had a beard and... And so he had met Swamiji in New York and now he was in San Francisco and he was involved in that big gathering that had happened where 30,000 people had gathered. So he was involved in that. And so he showed up. He had gone to India some time ago and he had heard about Hare Krishna chant and all of that. And so he had met Swamiji in New York and now he was in San Francisco. So he landed there and he was a kind of a celebrity. So people could recognize him. Oh, Allen Ginsberg is here. And so that sort of uh, gave some kind of a importance to this gathering of these 50 people. And they were anxiously waiting. And then Mukunda said that Swamiji will be very happy if we are all chanting Hare Krishna. And so all these 50 people chanting Hare Krishna, holding a flower in their hand with an incense stick in their hand and waiting. Uh, just imagine, Srila Prabhupada has not even stepped into San Francisco. Already there are 50 people chanting Hare Krishna and eager to hear him, to receive him. And then they're all waiting 
And then the United Airlines aircraft lands there. And Srila Prabhupada is accompanied by one more student whom he had initiated in New York. His name was Ranchor Das, young American. And very young, about 17, 18 years or so. Somehow he had got some money from his father and he had got a, bought a ticket for himself to be with Swamiji and see California and how Krishna consciousness is going to be, you know, set up and the temple going to be set up and all those kind of things. And he was in a suit. And so he was with Swamiji and so, and these young 50 of them waiting eagerly and suddenly they see Swamiji walking out and they see that Swamiji is radiant, he is beaming, there is something very, very special. And uh, Mukunda and Janaki, the moment they see Swamiji, they fall to the ground and pay their obeisance. And all these 60 of 50 of them, these are young Americans, they don't know. They, they think that maybe we should do the same thing that what they are doing. They also fall, come on to their knees and put their head down, but they don't know what to do. They are looking up and most of them are looking up, seeing what others are doing. And they suddenly see Swamiji walk past them and they all jump up. And then they see Swamiji is going there and, uh, and then they all come forward and give a flower and Srila Prabhupada was receiving the flowers from them very, very uh, graciously. And the way he was walking, he was just gliding. And all of a sudden, these two rows of these 50 people made two rows and then Swamiji was walking amidst them and they were all chanting. And uh, Prabhupada was very happy that these few young Americans have gathered and they are chanting Hare Krishna, they're giving him a flower, they're receiving him. And then at the end of this line, Swamiji says, Alan Ginsberg. And so he shakes his hand and he says, Oh, how come you are here? And then Alan Ginsberg says, Welcome, Swamiji, welcome to San Francisco. And then Mukunda is there and Swamiji is very happy to see all of them. And then they walk. Uh, they go to the, you know, the carousel to pick up the, to, the, to pick up the bags. And then these, all these 50 of them are trailing behind and these two dogs are running around in and out of this crowd. But it looks like, they, they say that, it looked like the two dogs also had figured out that who is the most important person in this gathering. And they were again and again going close to Swamiji's legs and being around rubbing them, rubbing themselves to his head, his, his feet and, and running past and all of those kind of things happening. And then Swamiji is waiting for the bags to come. And then he sees that they are all chanting. And then he also starts clapping. And then when they see that Swamiji is clapping, they are even more encouraged. And then Swamiji starts dancing, swaying and dancing, and all of them start singing and dancing. And, and Prabhupada leads a small, short kirtan waiting for the backs to arrive. Just see such a wonderful thing. Prabhupada, right in the airport, as soon as he has arrived, he has started off Harinam Sankirtan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such a great representative of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu carrying the holy name of Krishna. And they're all very happy singing and dancing. And then they head towards, they had, they had, they had uh, uh, borrowed, rented a limousine and they went there and then they opened the door and Swamiji sat inside. And he had actually too many flowers in his hand and then he started giving back to the those people who had come to greet him. And everyone, and then Prabhupada sits in the car, Mukunda gets into it, Alan Ginsberg gets into it, and then they have all these others, they also have a caravan of cars that had come in. And everyone's experience was that they had heard so much about Swami, and even more than what they had heard and what they had anticipated was the impact spiritual impact 
Swamiji created. They felt a certain kind of a lightness. They felt a certain kind of a joy in their heart. They saw that there was that, that happiness radiating from him. And it was very infectious. And they were all in deeply moved by that simple act of Swamiji coming, receiving, receiving the flowers from them, making them all chant Hare Krishna and moving on. So very clearly there was some, this, this is pure devotee, spiritual influence and impact, even, even unfamiliar to, our, to Krishna conscious culture, even they could experience that. When Srila Prabhupada was in the car, the devotees asked him, how was the, uh, how was the uh, flight? Because Prabhupada was 71 years and this was the first time he had a flight from New York to San Francisco. Prabhupada said, yes, as I, I, I saw, as the flight took off and all the big, big buildings of New York became matchboxes like that. He started showing. They were like small, like matchbox. And then uh, when Prabhupada also said that, then I had some problem with my ears and it was blockage, blockage. What was that? There was some pressure. Prayer. Oh, okay. You know, Prabhupada not used to flight. And, and uh, but rest of the time, Prabhupada was just chanting. And then he had flown and come now to New York, uh, sorry, San Francisco. And then the devotees drove him and they brought him to 518 Frederick Street. And Srila Prabhupada gets off the car and he sees the signage there. It says, Sri Radha Krishna Temple, big signage. And it is all written in the way that the hippie would write the, that kind of a script and the, that kind of an artist and signage. And Prabhupada sees that and he is so happy that a Radha Krishna temple in San Francisco, of course there's no deity there, there's no Radha, there's no Krishna, there's no deity or any such thing. But they would call that a temple and so, so they had given that name Sri Radha Krishna temple and Prabhupada was so happy. Then they had created a dais at the far end and then there were a few paintings and rugs and carpets put on the floor. And uh, straight away, Srila Prabhupada goes and sits on the stage and the storefront is packed with young people. Because of the news and the flyers and that were distributed around the last few, one week or so, and all these 50 people who had greeted him in the airport, they also come join and the temple hall is filled with people. And there are a few news reporters also. Mainstream uh, San Francisco Examiner, San Francisco Chronicle, two main newspapers and their reporters were also there. And Prabhupada invites all of them to join and uh, the Krishna consciousness movement, join to learn about the Hare Krishna mantra, learn about Krishna. And he gives a short talk and then devotees lead him to his apartment. And many more, a few more, few of the followers also fill up into his apartment. And there the news reporters ask for a short, there is a small interview. And then they ask uh, questions and then Prabhupada answers them. That, uh, I, uh, so you said that everyone can, you mean the acid heads and, and all of those kind of, meaning, you know, those kind of people who take drugs and, and so Swamiji says that, yes, everyone, we invite everyone to take to Krishna consciousness, including you. Not even the press people, even they are not spared. Because Prabhupada was inviting everyone to take to Krishna consciousness. And uh, the next day, the uh, examiner, the mainstream newspapers, carries the headline, the title, Swami invites the hippies. And the other paper, Chronicle, says, Swami in hippie land, holy man opens SF temple, San Francisco temple. So this was the kind of a reception Prabhupada received and two mainstream newspapers carried the news about Swamiji's arrival. And uh, <clears throat> 
the very same day, that evening onwards, Srila Prabhupada started a program in the San Francisco temple. And uh, like he was doing in New York, in the morning, next morning, he started at 7 a.m., the program, and in the evening, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, he would have the evening programs. And the very next morning at 7 a.m., he arrived there, and there were some number of people uh, gathering there, and Prabhupada began at 7 a.m., the Guru Ashtaka prayer, Samsara Dava, singing alone, and uh, no one could understand. It was like a new thing, and uh, he was absorbed. But the way he was singing and the, the sincerity that was flowing from his heart, it was very, very touching. And although they couldn't understand anything, it was Sanskrit prayers. For about 15, 17, 18 minutes, Prabhupada went on singing. And then Prabhupada started singing the Hare Krishna and everyone joined. And then Prabhupada would speak and then he would do more kirtan and then he would ask for question answers and after question answers he would have more kirtan and then he would have some apple or something cut into pieces and distribute as prasada and then he would go back to his apartment. So like this is the way Prabhupada started a daily program in the morning and three times a week in the evening. And gradually young people started attending these programs. And uh, so 17th of January, Srila Prabhupada arrived there. And then on 22nd of January, Prabhupada announced that he would conduct the initiation. And there were only four candidates. Sam and Melanie, they were going to get initiated. And they were so thrilled. They, they, had, they were waiting for a spiritual master. They had heard about Swamiji from Mukunda and Janaki. And now they had seen, they were completely impressed that yes, here is a genuine holy man. And we must take initiation from him. But Mukunda had told them, unless you are married, Swamiji is not going to initiate. He doesn't like approve of these boys and girlfriends and living together and all that. So on the 17th of January, they rushed to the marriage registration, whatever that arrangement the government has. And they, Mukunda also goes with them. And then they have brought their IDs and then all the arrangements. And then there is a commissioner of marriages and who comes and registers and does all that. And then the commissioner asks, where is the wedding ring? Oh my God, they didn't think about the wedding ring. And uh, they had the ID, they had the witness, they had everything, but then no wedding ring. And Mukunda comes up with a very innovative idea. He gathers some aluminum foil and then wraps it around and turns it and makes it into a ring. And that became the ring that they exchanged and the marriage commissioner was happy with that. And then the same day Swamiji was arriving a few hours from now, they rushed to the, and to the airport soon after that. And so in that sense, they were married. And so now they were ready for the initiation. And so on January 22nd is the initiation. Although Sam and, uh, and Melanie have heard about the initiation, but still it has not dawned on them fully everything. And so they think that this is an important ceremony and they must come with a tie and a coat. And so Sam comes with a tie, nicely tied, and a, and a coat over that, and a nice shirt, and then pants. And then Melanie is also dressed in some American dress. And uh, so and then there is another two more uh, young people, four of them, get, sit there for the initiation and Swamiji, as usual, full of enthusiasm. They have got the, they have made the arrangements for a, a sacrificial fire. And, uh, uh, but then it's becoming hot as the fire is started and then it's becoming hot and the doors are all, windows are all shut. And then uh, and there are four of the candidates, they are sitting and they are sitting in front of them. There is some small mound of rice grains 
and then uh, Swamiji is chanting and then he tells them, when I say Swaha, you must throw the rice. And so they said, oh, we must throw that. It's, it's all new for them, right? Taking some rice and throwing and you know, what's all that? So, uh, so Swamiji, the fire has, he has lit the fire and he's chanting mantras and he says Swaha and he tells them to throw. They didn't get it right. They thought that they should throw the rice at Swamiji. And so Swamiji is chanting the mantras and then he's saying Swaha. And suddenly they all take a handful of rice and throw at Swamiji. And it falls all over him. Swamiji suddenly shakes off the rice and says, No, not at me, at the fire. And so, oh, we have to throw it at the fire. All right. And then next time he says Swaha. And the rice falls into the <coughs> fire. So you can see how uh, you know, Prabhupada is gradually introducing these Vedic practices to these young Americans. And then uh, at the end of it, he's, there is something in, the, in our custom, as we all know, uh, there is the Purnahuti. And uh, they had kept, the, along with the rice grains, they had kept a banana. And uh, so uh, they expected, uh, and then Swamiji says that now, you pick up the bananas. And so, and you know, Prabhupada's English, they could not, all of them could not very easily follow. It was Prabhupada's English was accent. So Prabhupada said, now you pick up the bananas. And so they thought that, you know, we have to pick up the bananas and they start peeling it and about to eat it. No, 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 don't eat. Then what should we do? Put the banana into the fire. They had never seen a banana being put into the fire. Right? Very, very unusual, isn't it? Even for Indians, I would think it is unusual, except in Iskan. And uh, you, may, you can imagine for the Americans to put the banana into the fire. And they said, all right, they put the banana in the fire. And uh, so that's the Purnahuti is over. And now Swamiji says, now he says, bow down, bow down. So uh, in the midst of the chanting, and probably they couldn't hear Bow down, bow down, bow down. What are they saying? And uh, so they are, all four of them are looking at each other. And then uh, they, 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 they think that now we have understood. They all now come close to the fire. They heard it as blow now. And so all four of them come close together and they start blowing the fire. And Swamiji is suddenly shocked. Say, no, 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 no. Bow down, bow down, oh, pay obeisance, oh, that way. And then they pay their obeisance, and then they rise, and then Prabhupada has the kirtan, and then there is a, and there's a nice initiation feast. Just see the patience that Prabhupada was having to introduce all these Vedic practices, Vaishnava practices, among the, these young Americans. And they were very innocent. They were very receptive. They wanted to learn. They were fascinated by all these things. And they were eager to learn. And they were wanted to you know, be led by Swamiji. And uh, Swamiji was patiently tolerating all these things. And that's how the first initiation in San Francisco temple, the second Iskan temple, that's how it all happened. And then... The very next day, Swamiji said, we shall have the marriage, wedding, uh, the marriage, uh, the wedding ceremony of uh, uh, Sam. Sam became, uh, and uh, of course they got the name, Sa Sam became Shamsundar and Melanie became Malati Devi Dasi. Shamsundar Das and Malati Devi Dasi. And the other two also, they got uh, uh, their names. And so the very next day, Srila Prabhupada had fixed the marriage of Shamsundar and Malati. And once again, another fire sacrifice and the ceremony and all of that. But now this time they know that banana, what they should do with the banana, what they should do with the rice and how they should pay obeisance. These things were clear to them. And now to the next day for the marriage ceremony, uh, Melanie, no, sorry, Malatina, she borrowed the sari from Janaki, which she had brought from, remember the Banaras silk sari, red sari with the gold border. And now she was wearing that. 
And in fact, for the next few weddings in ISKCON, they keep borrowing the same sari would come back again and again. Different women, women would wear the same sari. They keep kept exchanging. And uh, another thing that they had heard this time was, probably Swamiji told them, I don't know, it's, it's not very clear. Uh, actually, it had happened even in the, in the wedding in uh, New York. Prabhupada had made that. And so I think that's how they heard. And the husband and the wife, the bride and the bridegroom here in this case, Shamsundar and Malati, their Malati's sari and Shamsundar's, he was wearing a pan, he was still wearing pants. And it has to be tied together. So it has to be knotted, right? That's part of the Vedic custom. So they had done that and then she had, she had her sari edge sent through the uh, belt loop of Shamsundar and a knot was put there and they were pretty much sitting next to each other together. And then they could not get, you know, and then the ceremony, the fire sacrifice had started and then Malati suddenly was having a call of nature and she wanted to go. But then the ceremony has begun and she's tied to Shamsundar. And how can, what can she do? And somehow she went through the whole ceremony. And then soon after the ceremony, they both of them dashed to the washroom. First he went in and she was standing outside the door shut with the sari going through the shut door. And then he came out and she went in and he was waiting. Still the sari shut through the door. And then they, later on they heard that. They have to be like that for seven days. And they thought, my God, we got to be like this with, with a knot tied for seven days. And they realized it's not going to work out. But then they found a convenient solution. They decided that we will take off the clothes and we wear, wear, wear other clothes. But these two clothes, we will keep them tied in the closet. And so they had the two clothes of the marriage tied with the knot and kept in the closet for seven days and while they went on with other things. So the, these are all wonderful things that this shows that there was kind of an innocence and a simplicity. These were all, you know, Krishna arranging these things to help Swamiji, to help Srila Prabhupada establish Krishna consciousness worldwide. And uh, so uh, this is how uh, the first uh, the wedding in the San Francisco temple also happened. And then the next few days, the mantra rock dance was going to happen. And what happens in the mantra rock dance and how Swamiji comes there and all of that, we will keep for the next session. Hare Krishna.